Hello everyone, welcome back to a supply drop. This is unboxing number two. This is the long unboxing. I'm going to talk about the components in more detail. That way I can share thoughts. Uh, in case you missed the first unboxing, the idea was a short unboxing to show components and then a long unboxing for you know sharing my thoughts uh, on the initial impressions. Uh, that way I can kind of talks a uh, talk you know poetically <laughs> and then for those who just want to see the components boom <clears throat> there's a short unboxing so hopefully this gives you an idea of what's so cool about so again I want to thank GMT games for sending this to me for purposes of um, review and unboxing since I don't know how to play yet everything I say is you know just what I'm gonna see so first of all, we have a Herman Lutman design. I'm seeing that name all over the place. Herman has done amazing games. A lot of solo games that I've played and thoroughly enjoyed. I think this is be the first big box game I've played from Herman. And I had to admit, my initial look through the rules, I'm a little intimidated. It seems kind of complex. I looked at the scale of complexity on the back and it says it's at the low end of medium. So I'll have to uh, kind of really sit down with it and put pieces out and just kind of kind of fiddle with it. So I have to admit, on my first initial read through, I was just a little intimidated. I think I'll be okay because I've played Panzer Second Edition that has basic rules, advanced rules, and optional rules, and that to me is probably the most complex game I have. So if I can handle that, I think we'll be okay here. So I'm very excited to get in here. So what is this? This is at any cost, Mets. Had to admit, I don't know much about this. Uh, one of the things, if you've watched my channel, it's almost watching me evolve in my knowledge and expanding my horizons in wargaming, historical gaming. Most of my gaming has been World War II. And so to see you know, kind of expand out to early European. I've got some uh, later European type stuff. This, I'm looking here, 1870. I tried to do a little bit of research on this before I, I opened this. I, I went to Wikipedia, because Wikipedia, you know, that's a historian's best friend. And what I learned about Metz is interesting. I guess this is a battle that took place over about four days. And the outcome I guess really shaped and changed Europe going forward. I, I guess that uh, France was again in kind of the top of the, the powerhouse, if you will, and when they clashed with the Prussians, then the outcome of the, the war was, <clears throat> I think a lot of people thought French, the French would win again. And I was reading about how some of the, the Prussian officers, they just kept throwing men into the French lines and the French lines were destroying thousands of people a day <clears throat> and finally the French lines broke and it's kind of a pivotal change because this is on the cusp of what some people would call modern warfare so just as you're coming off of uh, a strong Napoleonic era warfare with lines and things like that and as you're starting to see advance in technologies, that this is one of the last large scale type of warfare in Europe uh, until much later. And, and so it's like, wow, I mean, this is, these are things I don't know about. So as I get to the gaming, it really just expands my understanding of what has shaped Europe as, as, as what we see today. So I was very excited to, to play this and on the back, this is another thing I thought was really cool. Normally when I do an unboxing, we don't talk a whole lot about the people that help put this together. And the game design, game developer, art director, there's a lot of people in here that, that put effort into bringing this. And I was super impressed because there's a lot of names here I know. Her Herman Lutman, uh, Roger B. McGowan, I've heard also Gene Billingsley. Uh, is one of the executive producers. Uh, Mark 
Simonich. Uh, now that name I'm not sure how to pronounce, but I see that name all the time, especially when it comes to art, which is also over here. Uh, counter art, uh, Pascal Da Silva and Mark Simonich. So again, there's a lot of I want to say icons that went into helping bring this to life. So Herman Lutman designed this. You've got a lot of folks who did great counter art and map artwork. The map, when we look at it, the map is outstanding. So I can't wait to show you the map. Uh, so this has just got <clears throat> some amazing, amazing people behind it. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy to have this. So now if my Wikipedia explanation of this is lacking, well, you will have to go to Wikipedia yourself and read, or whatever you read. <laughs> Wikipedia is probably not the best place to get your history, but, um, you know, what are you going to do? Get a real book, I guess. Okay, so let's open it up. First of all, there's a thank you note. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole note, <clears throat> but I think it's really cool that you've got someone taking the time to, you know, put your components in the box and then actually own it and sign their name to it. Uh, so I think that's very, very cool. That's a nice touch that I wish more companies would do. I, I'm sure that's a lot of, you know, you got to cut, paste, ink, paper. You know, it's another expense, but I think that's a very, very cool thing to have. So I'll just set that aside. <clears throat> then you have the rules of play. I'm going to move the box. So first thing, this is a great looking rule book. You've got... I call it magazine quality paper because it's that kind of a glossy, uh, but I ran my finger. It's not smudging. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want it to smudge, but the ink is on here really, really good. And it's nice and full color. Uh, one thing is just, um, you know, just read it. I think because I've not played a whole lot of this era of, of warfare, I think <clears throat> most of the kind of like Napoleonic era gaming I've done has been, I think at a higher level, where you're playing with like a whole map of Europe, and so you're moving like armies and stuff. This seems to be zoomed in a little bit when I look at the map. So now you're fighting like in a specific area. <coughs> Excuse me. And so as you move into kind of the tactical aspects of the game, it brings with it a complexity you don't see when you zoom the camera out. Uh, so now this is where I, where I get to learn about formations and the importance of maybe laying smoke and it just it just seems like there's a, some layers there of complexity I've not had to deal with before. But looking forward to it. So we have here two columns of text. Now the nice thing too is for my my aging eyes this isn't very difficult to read. The font size is probably what you would see in, in most rule books, but it's not like the smushed three columns that I've seen in some other war games. So yes, it, it might seem like a lot, but um, just even looking though, the way it's broken down, fire combat, <clears throat> fire combat is like half a page, one page, and then another page. So like two pages for fire combat, Let's see, morale test is half a page, break tests. So if you just chunk down your reading, it's probably going to be very easy to absorb. So I'm really looking forward to sitting down with this and reading it. <clears throat> Plus, it doesn't really seem to have concepts I've not heard about before. So there's, you know, fire combat, I see assault combat, there's rally, uh, you know, there was movement at the beginning out of command step I've like these are all concepts I've seen in other games in the turn phase then there's a separate section on earthworks <clears throat> unit breakdown you know uh, just extra stuff at the end here overnight game turn so again nothing that looks new uh, we'll just have to learn it for this system so the rules look great and they, they only click in at 28 pages you probably can't see that. It's just 28 pages. So it's nothing, like I said, that will you know, be impossible for someone to learn. Now, just based on that, though, if someone were to ask me, would you recommend this for a new player? I mean, I don't know. I haven't played it myself yet. 
But honestly, I think a, a person new to wargaming could probably learn on any game. It just depends on how much time and effort you're willing to invest. So I'm looking forward to this one. Then we had two player aid cards. Cards. I think I said cards. Two player aid cards. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Now they are they are identical, so each person will get the same one. This has got assault combat results on one side, fire combat results on the other, and then it looks like uh, a lot of your modifiers for that. Uh, that's great because again, <clears throat> when you're in the rule book, one of the things that I've learned now is that sometimes the explanation for how these components work are pretty lengthy. But once you see it then on the charts, it's really easy to follow. You just look for your modifiers, roll some dice, and there you go. Uh, so again, these look great. And the fact that they're, it looks like probably, probably everything you need for fire combat and assault are on there. That means you don't have to keep looking in the rule book. So that's great. <clears throat> Same thing with the events. I haven't looked in the rule book, but I'm pretty sure then as you... Uh, need to do events, the full explanation for those events will be here as well. So again, that might be a two or three page item in the rule book, but the important part you need is right here. And then you also have train effect. And so again, you know, even though um, that might add a couple pages in the book, all games have this. And so that's the approach I take. I, and again, I'm psyching myself up because I'm looking, I'm like, oh, I don't know, this looks kind of complicated, but it's really no different than anything else I've played, right? You move people, their, their movement is affected by terrain, terrain can affect combat, you have fire combat, which has modifiers, you have assault combat for when you put two people in hexes together, and, <clears throat> you know, there's probably rally and morale rules and things like that. So again, no new concepts, just have to learn how they're implemented here. So that was a Prussian event chart. Here's the French. So again, probably all the details you need to know on the events that, that happen, and then the same terrain effect. <clears throat> so those are there. Now this I'm interested in, because in the playbook it has the scenarios and I'm guessing then that this is maybe, you know, all the charts you need to run a particular scenario. I remember reading somewhere, it wasn't on the box, maybe the box says. Um, yeah, I had to, where did I see it? I, I think I was reading on the actual GMT website, and I think there's like four, four little scenarios and like a linked like two big stairs that link to a campaign. I probably am remembering that wrong <clears throat> or just taking a guess off of here, but like here's the information for one of the bigger scenarios or kind of like one of the campaigns. And then on the back is information for two smaller scenarios. And there's actually two cards for that. And I see victory point tracks, French command event tracks for different things. So again, yeah, I mean, it just, there's a lot of detail here, um, but I'm glad they got it on these cards just so I can have everything at my fingertips. Yeah, I, I really can't exp <laughs> explain these until I read the rules, but it looks like you've got some great play aid, aid accessories to help you with the scenarios. All right, <clears throat> now to the counters. Counters are where I always, that's, that's for me what makes a game or breaks a game. I love map art, but counters, that for me is where I put a lot of criticism. So the first thing I, I look at is this, these don't feel super sturdy, okay? Um, let me pop off an individual. Could be because they're, they're small, so the way they're cut makes this seem kind of flimsy. So let me just grab a counter. <clears throat> and they're punched okay. This one's kind of, they're kind of stuck. These are, I'm going to say traditional, where they connect in the corners. Because I just pop one off. I don't see any connections on the edges. 
okay, why would I bring that up? Because I'm a, I'm a corner clipper person. I've got my corner clipping tool. I clip corners and I hate games that connect on the sides and leave the little nub because I can't clip the nub in the middle, but I can clip the connection points and nubs at the corners. So that that's going for it. Uh, I want to say the counter itself is actually pretty sturdy. So I'm thinking that the wobbly nature here, I mean like, comes from the fact that there's a lot of counters on here and the way they're cut is making it wobbly. Because here I have in my hands a counter and no, I'm not gonna purposely bend it in half and do a, a force test, but I'm just fiddling with it and it's not bending easily. So individually, I think the counters are going to be just fine. I think they only feel flimsy, like I said, because you've got, you know, a couple hundred counters here per page and they're all cut. So I'm bending it on those cut lines. So good news. I was worried at first when I pulled these out in the short unboxing, I was like, oh man. But there you go. They're actually pretty good. And I think once you clip the corners, Another thing I'm looking at too is if they're offset, uh, they're not bad. These actually fit on there really, really well. <clears throat> I mean, that's only important because, you know, you don't want any information cut off. But if I can put this up here for you to look at, they're fine. They're aligned great. Even the back is good. I can only tell you how many times I've gotten a game where they're misaligned, like maybe just the back. So you punch and then the back is all jangled, even though the front looks good. These are actually really good on both sides. <coughs> now, you do have, let's see what to talk about. I mean, you have infantry, you have some administrative counters. There's a lot of administrative counters. I see assault counters, disrupted counters, withdraw, advance, frozen in place, some assault headquarters, this is a chip pull system, so I'm thinking right down here. Here's some of the units that you'll stick in your in the in the counter tray, or uh, you know, like a cup, so you can draw these for the different units. Chit activation. But <clears throat> let's pop in here. This is the part that for me is what really makes or break a game. It's the artwork. I hope that focuses. Focus. Focus. Yeah, we focused. That's pretty good. I like the artwork. It's a small counter. So obviously you're not gonna get like a full figured uh, super detail, <clears throat> but they are color. They have a good line drawing. If I had a magnifying glass, I would love to get in there and see, but I can tell that there's like the backpack, rifle, there's even a strap, different colored pants and shirts, so there's a little bit of uh, difference in the troops. So it's not just like all a solid color. And um, it looks like it's a standard symbol for the infantry, which is fine. So infantry, uh, cavalry looks about the same. It has like maybe a standard figure. I don't know if you can zoom in there though, but there's a horse on there. Cannon looks good. So I'm gonna say this, uh, am I super blown away by the art? No, but it's because they're small. For the size of the counter, I am blown away by the art. I think they did a really good job putting a nice figure on here. <clears throat> Even the cavalry, I see a couple different types of horses. Um, yeah, so what you've got then is, is good. And then the, all of the admin counters, everything's clearly labeled as well. I'm putting these down on the table <clears throat> and I'm standing up and I'm a couple feet away. I can actually still see everything fairly well. That, that's a concern I get from a lot of my older gamers or gamers with eyesight problems is some games, the counters, everything is so small, the text is hard to read, the picture takes up too much space and you can't see numbers. 
I can see everything just fine at a couple feet away. Uh, so if I was to rate the counters <clears throat> on a scale of one to five, I'm gonna give them like a four. You know, they're good, they work, they're, they're readable. And here's why it's a four. Here's why it's a four. <clears throat> I think there's a debate among people. It's an opinion, it really is. Uh, some folks love super large counters with a big piece of artwork and then you got the numbers on there and that's that's great. Uh, some people, the counters are just there to represent a body of troops, a vehicle, horses, artillery. Uh, so you don't need a whole lot of graphics and pictures. You need the numerical information so you can fight your battle. So that's why I say it's subjective. For me, that's why these are a four. Uh, I like big counters. It's it's just easier. I think they look great because I like miniature wargaming, but I can't paint miniatures worth a darn. And so when I get a game like this, this is how I represent those line battles and Napoleonic era battles is with the counters. <coughs> so excuse me. I guess I guess my cold did not go away the way I hoped it would. So. It's a board game first and foremost. It's not a miniatures game. So like I get that. Uh, but it is nice to have my board game laid out. You have these large counters with great artwork and the numerical combat data and it just kind of has a table presence. <clears throat> with this, you have a nice table presence because the artwork included is actually very nice. But it's small. So for me, some of that immersion is pulled out and yeah, then it's just more a matter of these are very functional counters for the combat data because they're easy to read even at, at a distance. So that's why it's a four, uh, is because they are super functional and they do their job great. I can read everything just fine. And ultimately, that's what you need to play a game is to be able to see all the data. All right, but I tell you what though, here is what brings the artwork back up a hundredfold. This map is amazingly gorgeous. I cannot stress enough to you how great this looks in person. Yeah, you can see it on the camera and, and hopefully the camera makes it look pretty good. But, oh my goodness. I saw this on some other people, like, <clears throat> reviews. Let me move this camera for a second. I saw this on, uh, I think, Facebook. Let me go to this, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> I tell you what, this was the most amazing thing I've ever seen somebody do. And I'm too afraid to try this myself. So when I talked about miniature gaming and the counters kind of take the place of the miniatures for me, that's what someone kind of did. Oh my goodness. So they took where the different contour lines are to represent the elevations. And uh, you probably can't see from this distance but there's actually some really good contour lines here on the map. So to find your elevations is very, very easy. And what they did was they took like an X-Acto knife and cut along those contour lines. And for the different heights then and elevation, they stuck it on like foam core. So they made it, they turned this map into a 3D relief map. And I've seen other games do that but it looked amazing with this. Even the little hill, there's one right here, it's not even a full hex. They cut that out and popped it up. And it immediately gave you that sense of depth, like, oh, here's where I can move people. Because <clears throat> there's, I think it's in here. This is like a valley. I've got hills and it kind of slopes up. And so if you have you know, defenders along here, and you funnel troops in, they're just getting shot down on. And on the map, you can kind of visualize that, but if you cut this out and pop it up into 3D, oh, it is sharp. And I think I'm actually going to attempt doing that. I'm kind of scared, but I want to do that because I think it looks amazing. And that's then when you put these counters on, see that's another thing, right? You're saying, well, of course it has to be small counters because you've got small hexes. 
Like, I get it. I get it. I'm just saying, I'm such a visual person, the counters really help. <clears throat> but they fit really good here in the hexes. And so if I had that 3D pop, then I think these would show up. These pieces are going to show up great on this map. Can you see this one? I put it all, almost off camera. Put them right here on the hill. And the counters, the way they're colored, they pop and can contrast against the map really well. So it's easy to see your pieces. The camera might not show it, but in person, like I have no problem seeing this and I can read the numbers. So again, that's why this system, the counters get a four. They're very functional. Uh, they, still <coughs> they still have a great artistic look, but this map is a five. Hands down, for me, that's a five. And if I cut this and layer it, I'm definitely going to share that with you. Uh, so I was super excited for this. I don't think I usually get super excited over a map, but today, yeah, today that was worth getting excited about. All right, let's put that away. We got a playbook. Playbook. <clears throat> this is a 32 page playbook. In the beginning, just like a normal playbook, it's got your goes in, explains scenario conditions, there's special scenario rules, your victory conditions. Most of this first part of the book is all kinds of scenario stuff. Oh, wow, the time. It has a lot of stuff. I don't know what all that means yet. I think a lot of this is telling me when units arrive and what hexes they arrive in. That's fine, yeah, reinforcements. Probably initial setup, reinforcements. And it looks like um, probably notes on each scenario as well. So a lot of research went into this. So that's, that's amazing in itself. And so another scenario there. Okay, so actually you have approximately 20 pages worth of scenarios. And then page 21 goes into designer notes. And then that's... That's probably 12 pages. So the, the uh, play guide here, playbook, is 32 pages. <clears throat> but 20 pages of that is scenario information. And then 12 pages is designer notes. And I definitely, definitely want to read the designer notes first because I've learned <clears throat> that when you read the designer notes first, that actually makes reading the rules easier because it gives you some insight as to what they were thinking and what they're trying to replicate. And so when you understand what they're trying to accomplish with the game, then that sometimes gives perspective on the rules when you read it. So for me, I like to read the designer notes first. And there's a healthy dose of designer notes. Plus, this will give me insight into the history of the battle. And then again, reinforce game concepts to replicate that. <clears throat> so that is a good playbook. It's also the same quality glossy paper of the uh, the rule book and it's also full color I mean you probably saw that as I flipped through but just just to make that clear again this is a really good looking book I'm super impressed with GMT I have to admit when I got Panzer that's just paper uh, it wasn't this kind of paper it's like felt paper pa I think it has some gloss to it I don't know it's a different I think it's gotten better over time is what I'm trying to say their quality on product keeps going up. Baggies. Okay, why do I like the baggies? I like GMT counter trays, but the problem is the boxes are usually too thin for me to properly sort and store all the counters I need in the game box once I've sorted all the counters. Baggies do the trick. Um, <clears throat> I have slowly started using all the baggies that come in a GMT game, and they seem to fit pretty good. So that's that's why I I used to laugh I'm like ha ha, who puts their counters in plastic baggies? Well, I do now, so I don't laugh anymore. GMT counter trays I think are fantastic if you have a big thick box like uh, Combat Commander. All those I have in the GMT counter trays because they fit in the box when I put it all together. <clears throat> Four 10-sided dice. I don't know if the colors will come into play at all. I think they will. Uh, so this is fine. 
I think, you know, if, if you lose them, I'm a role player. I have like a thousand ten-sided dice laying around, but these are really nice dice. I know a lot of people, they don't talk about dice that much. But these are really good dice. So hopefully everybody gets two white, a gray, and a red. I'm pretty sure that's going to mean something for combat results. <clears throat> but there you go. Four dice. So let's put it back in the box. We've got four dice, your plastic baggies, your 32-page playbook, gorgeously illustrated map. I did not mention that it's single-sided, but it is single-sided. That will make it easier for me to cut up at some point. I did pop off four counters. The counters, even though the counter sheet feels flimsy, the counters themselves are not. You have two trays, uh, I guess not a tray, but two counter sheets full of, I'm guessing half inch, what does it say, half inch? That's my guess, what does it say? Oh, 9 sixteenth. So I guess 8 sixteenths would be half an inch, 9 16 they're just a hair over half an inch. Two scenario play aid cards. You have a Prussian and French event chit card with terrain and uh, for fortunes of war, sequence of play, some additional play aids on the back. Two identical fire, <clears throat> fire combat and assault, assault combat result charts. Hope I said that right. And a 28 page rules of play, full color, glossy paper. And my thank you note, and then the cover. Yeah, uh, there it is. Fantastic stuff. So again, thank you GMT Games. I, uh, I can't wait to dig in here. Uh, first, I gotta clip all the counters. <clears throat> I'm not gonna cut the map until after I've learned to play. I think that's gonna come later. That'll be like an advanced thing. And, well, I don't know. <clears throat> I have a three-day weekend. I don't know if I can have that done in a weekend. I don't know, we'll see. But um, that, that'll be a project for later. <clears throat> but thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or thoughts about the game, please leave it. If you want to leave some historical notes or share a good reference to learn more about Mets 1870, please share. <clears throat> I'll tell you, the other reason why I was super excited is because the battles, some of this takes place, it says here, August of 1870. And I think this takes place like the 16th, 17th, 18th of August, somewhere in there. Well, my birthday is August 16th. So this will be the first game I've had where historical events happened kind of on my birthday. So yay, birthday present. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you later.